Hey guys, Ahmed here and in this video I will share which is the best way I found to actually learn how to create scalable design systems on Figma that could actually work in production level designs, meaning when you have 50, 100, 150 screens in a certain project. Now, what I'm going to show you will actually require you to install a open source library called Ant Design System and then I will show you how to actually practice to actually learn how to create a design system on Figma. So what I need you to do is, if you're on Figma, go to the home page and make sure you click here and actually select community. So I'm just gonna select community here. And then I'm going to search for an design system. And I'm going to basically say files and templates. And you want this one, the Mr. Biscuit one. You wanna click on this, press get a copy. Once you get a copy, then you can actually copy and paste certain sections that the actual file has. I'm gonna, just gonna show you how it works. So I'm just gonna, it's gonna open up for me now. I'm gonna pick my own account. So on the left side, what you see are the certain pages and you wanna go to the small components like buttons, icons, typography, and just copy the ones that we will practice. I want you to copy the breadcrumb page and then you will come here in your video. All right, so the way this practice will go is, so now that we actually have two components, breadcrumb and button, I'm gonna show you how it works. What we will do is we will literally copy the entire component. And the reason we are doing this component by component is that we want to understand the decision-making process of the designer when they are thinking of how to design the scale system. So I'm gonna press F for frame shortcut. And this might look actually pretty boring, but this is the best way I learned how to acquire these skills. So what I'm looking for is I'm really looking at this component detail and what I'm realizing is, first of all, it has variations and but realize that each row is actually a particular set in that variation. The first row doesn't have any icons to its left. Sure, it might have a drop down to its left, but it doesn't have any icons. The second row has a drop down option, but also has an icon option on its left. And the third row only has the icon option with the drop down. So you have 12 variations, but three different sets of four in that kind of the whole uh, component group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T and I'm gonna write home. And I am going to, let's say, pick this to be a bit of a gray color. So around here is good. And this means that it's not selected yet. And then I'm gonna press Option Command K to make this a component. And then I am actually going to add properties and I'm gonna make this a variant. So now it actually becomes like the left side, a variant. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a new variant, but I am going to make this now, instead of usually going by vertically, I'm gonna make it go horizontally, and I'm gonna name the second one, basically, let's name the property of here to be, the first property is probably going to be uh, disabled, and I'm going to say, uh, yes to the first one and the second one I'm gonna say no and I'm gonna literally check what well, how did they name it and I look at it and I'm like oh it's as in like current so their disabled actually looks different so this actually means that their current is true okay so instead of naming it disabled they mean if it's currently selected or not so their property is actually current and the first one is going to be no and the second one is going to be yes. And then I'm gonna change the color of this one to be completely black actually. So I'm gonna pick it here and I'm gonna pick this color to be all black because it's the selected one. And then the, the link next to it is actually going to be kind of with the not selected current one but it will have a drop down option. So I'm actually gonna press this one and on Figma, if you press it and then press on the plus, you'll get a variant here and Figma tells it to itself we are going horizontal. And then I'm gonna add an icon here. So what I could do is I would actually get an icon here, let's say Chevron. So let's say we are here. I want this to be a bit smaller. Let's go 20 and I want this to be one pixel. 
and I want this to have the same color as this option that's good and I want it to be closer and I am looking at my alignment and roughly around here is good and maybe one more pixel and then I can actually I can actually put this in that one so yep get it that one okay so I'm gonna just put it inside yep and that works and I'm gonna insert yeah and that works and this is the third one and then I'm going to add a new property new variant and the property will be let's say drop down and let's say no and I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say yes and no for the current one and yeah and I could just keep going on doing these things and let's actually uh, create an instance and let's go to the resources section here I'm gonna pick this video and I'm gonna pick the second one which is the one we created and I'm gonna fetch this instance now I can actually change how it looks right I can just do these and play with them and I'm gonna check again how they name the drop-down one and they actually named the drop-down one so that's correct so observe how I'm actually practicing this first I am trying to copy by my own intuition meaning I began and I understand I observed and I that began copying and then I after I actually made some progress I named certain things I checked back in, in to see how they named it and then I adjust so I have a constant feedback loop of almost like a professional designer that is teaching me how to get better in learning design systems and this is the best way I found out to actually learn this concept very well this design system concept very well because if you are working on a complex product it actually takes a lot more than a tutorial to actually name things right to actually create documentation for it and this is the best way I actually learn and I hope this video helped you understand how you can go on about practicing so that you can learn how to create scalable design systems and if you want to find out how to actually practice design skills especially UI design skills check this video next